Hello everybody. In this workshop, we are going to develop a detailed ice pack model. We will assign the boundaries. Uh, we will import the trace options. We will also assign the trace and metal fractions on the PCB and view them. We will also look into a couple of tips to increase productivity by the use of more face alignment tools copying objects and editing multiple objects together. We will build the model from scratch and then we will import the traces onto the PCB. Go to edit, references. We'll change the screen up direction to Z. We will now change the unit. We will add a cabinet to the system. Double click on cabinet. Geometric properties. Now move to properties tab. Select what are the boundaries of this cabinet like. We'll select wall for max y, min y, and min z and max z. Select the cabinet walls. Right click. Edit. Now we can change the property of multiple walls together. Go to properties. We will assign a heat transfer coefficient. Select a grill. Double click on the grill. Geometric properties. Change the plane to YZ. It, it will say that the drill is outside and we will select the grill and select allow out for the time being. You can see why it's giving the error that the grill is outside the cabinet. We are now going to morph the faces. This is the morph face icon. Select the first face. Accept it using the central mouse button. Select the second face. Accept it and the grill will be placed on the appropriate place. Now we will add an intake fan. Click on the fan icon. Double click on the fan. Go to geometric properties. You want a three dimensional fan. Align it with YZ. Center of the fan. Put it. And the fan has been placed appropriately. Done. Now we will change the properties of the fan. The properties. Flow type is non linear. Go to, we will add a nonlinear curve to the system using the text editor. You can specify your curve. We'll use CFM and inches of water column pressure and write down the values. The spacing is not significant here as long as the data is presented in pairs. Now, if we go to the graph editor, we should be able to see the fan curve. Uh, you can also add and delete fan points by using this graph editor. 
I'll be using the middle button in my mouse to add fan cocks points, and you can see. We're going to copy this fan. One copy. Translate the fan in the y direction by 60 mm. And we have a second fan which has been added to the system. You can change the color of the fans by going to the info tab. You change the shading to a solid value, or you can change to any of these options. We are now going to add a block. Properties. We'll specify the surface on individual side. Specify the thermal properties. And we'll specify the heat thermal resistance. We'll copy this block. Translate it in the y direction. Now we are going to copy both of these blocks and again translate it in the y direction. Select all the four blocks together. Rename object. To DDR. You can see it automatically names them and numbers them accordingly. We'll add a couple of more blocks. This will be our board. A large flash drive. We'll now add some power to the block. Select like the DDR4 together. Edit. They have the same power. The large flash emits 0.5 water power, and the small flash emits 0.25. We will now add a package to the system. It's a PBGA package. Package thickness is 2.5 million. We'll align it to the XY plane. We'll change the model type to detailed. The schematic button helps in understanding the panel inputs. And the component visibility button lists all the components inside the package. If you click on component visibility, it will show you all of these components inside the package. Click on schematic button and will show you the schematic of the package. We will now specify the solder. You specify it in terms of rows. And the pitch. Specify the ball diameters and the material. So you can see you now shoulder balls are visible. Move to dime mold and specify the power. You can copy this package by just using this new button. Set the values. Update. Now we will add a detailed heat sink. This is the heat sink icon. Change the geometric properties. Specify the number of fin count, thickness, 
Okay. It sits right on top of package two. Double click on the board, go to geometry. At this point, we are going to import an ECAD file. It's called an ANSYS EDB file. It's a .def file. We'll change the reposition from object to trace to trace to object, and we will disable the resize object option. In this case, the traces will be repositioned to the location of the board, as the board and traces are of the same size. There is no need to resize the board. A new window opens up, which shows the board layer and wire information. You can see every layer and its thickness. Now we can change the thickness of each and every layer. Select the grid density by size. The row and column size will be 0 0.254 and 0 0.254. So this becomes a square. The grid density is used to compute the metal fractions and the local effective conductivity. It's a good idea that a grid is cut equal to the minimum value or minimum trace width. For, for accurate results, it's a good idea to uh, cut a grid size equal to the minimum via or minimum trace width. Here for computational is we are using two times the value. And hence, for a minimum trace width of 0 0.127, we are specifying twice the value of that. That is 0 0.254. We can now see all the traces that have been imported. You can also right click on the board and change the way the traces are seen. Color by traces, color by layer, or using a single color. Also, under model, if we want to see the metal fractions, Select the board, select the top layer, and display. And it shows you the metal fraction on the first layer. Similarly, select any other layer, display, and it shows you the metal layer on that display. We'll now rename our components. Click on this icon to see the power and temperature limits that you have specified. So these are all the powers that have been specified. It's a very helpful tool to get an overview of the model. The default temperature is set to 20 degrees. And you can also modify the powers here if you want. You can also look at the summary in HTML format comes out like this. Summary report is very useful and you can use it to review your model. There is another option to see the model in terms of materials. Go to model, show objects by material, and you can then look at which material is FR4, which material is pure copper, so now you should be able to build a model using imported ECAT traces. You will be able to review your model summaries, power and temperature limits. You can also use more faces to align different tools, copy objects and rename multiple objects at the same time.